Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today we're going to talk about, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Andrew Yang and Elon Musk, and Elon Musk's August 10th t approval tweet of Andrew Yang, which is being read by many as an endorsement. All right, so let's talk about this. I want to talk about one, did Elon Musk endorse Andrew Yang? Uh, what does an endorsement mean? And then uh, I think a much broader, more important question, does the Elon Musk um, tweet approval tweet help us? And I'll give you the answer now. I think the answer is no, but I'll, I'll, def I'll give you evidence on why I think that answer is no, okay? All right, so let's talk about it. So one, what, what did Elon actually do? So Elon sent two, two texts. He responded directly to Andrew, uh, to actually, there was an Andrew Yang tweet. I think that was retweeted by someone else. And uh, Elon Musk came on. And I think he, I'm almost positive he, he copied Andrew Yang into the tweet. And he said, I support Yang. Okay. Three simple sentence, three simple words, one sentence. But it's publicly made on Elon Musk's Twitter account. It really is incredible. We, uh, we continue to see this really incredible rise of the importance of Twitter. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really inc incredible platform. Uh, by the way, just a quick note, I have a Twitter, uh, but I don't use it all for politics. My, I, I am very focused on politics on my YouTube channel, uh, but my Twitter, you know, I do have a whole bunch of a whole bunch of hobbies. I'm really into movies and a whole bunch of other things, and I talk about a wide array of things on Twitter. So feel free to go over there, but also feel free not to, because I understand that, like, you know... Uh, Every, you know, most people here you know, who are listening to this channel right now, highly focused on politics, which is 100% okay. Uh, but Twitter really is pretty amazing. All right. So in addition to that, Elon Musk said, um, he said, uh, Andrew Yang will be our first openly goth president. Now, at first I thought this was, I thought he was making a joke and, uh, and actually, and then I, I looked it up and it, it actually surprisingly, I guess it's not that surprising, but, uh, Andrew Yang actually was a goth when he was younger, which is really pretty amazing. Uh, very surprising, you know, just a fun fact. Um, and I thought, I thought at first that, that, uh, Elon Musk wasn't being, wasn't being serious from his, I support Yang tweet, but it, it is like, it was essentially like an inside joke. Um, and, and it does reference something that actually is in Andrew Yang's history. So it looks like this, like Elon Musk is fairly serious about this. All right. So, so it looks like uh, Elon Musk really is getting on board with Yang and starting to understand. And I understand that there's some people who are excited about this because this could really help Andrew Yang, which I, I definitely think it could. So from one perspective, it, it will help from a money perspective. So, uh, but we're going to get there as far as the full help, right? So, but, but let's recognize real quick, um, Elon Musk is a billionaire. He could give even a few, if you can, you know, get a few million over to Andrew Yang, that's going to help, right? Uh, these, these campaigns burn money like fuel, like jet fuel. It's, it's really hard. And I have a huge amount of sympathy for, for how much work Andrew Yang has to do to continue to keep that money wheel turning, right? I think a lot of people who look at politics from the outside don't understand how much pressure is on each and every one of these candidates to, to bring in dollars. And those dollars are, are traded for name recognition. And that name recognition is gained through um, mailing efforts, through phone call banks, and uh, through advertisements and through social media spends, it's very, very expensive. Okay, all right. So, so from a practical perspective, if Elon Musk, you know, moves millions of dollars, you know, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. Now, how would you do that? There's legal ways to to move that money over. That hasn't been shut down. We currently allow money within our organizations. That none of that is illegal. Uh, all of that is fine, right? But he could help from that money perspective. And we can't forget that, right? I want to talk about endorsement. Here's a question. Did Elon Musk actually endorse uh, Andrew Yang? Well, that's a really good point. I think I think a lot of people would be like, well, did he endorse him? Like, oh, it's just a tweet, right? But the idea that, uh, you know, this is where we're at, we're at. It's 2019. Open your eyes up. You can't just say it's just a tweet. Increasingly, Twitter is directing our entire society with, ma with massive movements. Last year in 2018... Uh, the Me Too movement really, hashtag Me Too, like, you know, you will see Twitter talked about 
in you know on Wikipedia on you know objective sources like right there like Twitter is all up in America's business all up in the national on the national stage and there are there's an incredible amount of scrutiny and highlight and focus that is starting to be put onto Twitter to say this is a huge platform for political speech right and and frankly Donald Trump okay let's take you know he 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 tweets a bunch of stuff and a lot of it's not helpful right but absolutely nobody can ignore the fact that Twitter has absolutely allowed the US president as a role not Donald Trump but the US president as a role can now speak directly to the people essentially skipping the media right like and at this point Twitter has not put enough controls around around political speech and so you know and clearly especially with Trump out <clears throat> Twitter allows you know allows the US president to talk right to the American people and uh, in literally in five seconds, right? And to completely skip the media. And this is new and it's incredibly powerful, right? So because tw- Twitter is powerful, I think, I actually think you it is totally fair to say um, Elon Musk has endorsed uh, Andrew Yang by saying, I support Yang, right, on Twitter. It's incredibly clear what he's saying. And uh, Twitter is a massive platform, and nobody's confused about that at this point, right? So to say that Elon Musk has endorsed uh, Andrew Yang is absolutely real, right? You know, uh, I, I think there's, you know, if somebody, if you're saying, oh, you can't say he endorsed him because he just says I support Yang on a tweet, well, you're, you're not, you're not paying, paying attention to the power of Twitter and what's happened to our political discourse in 2019. So the answer is absolutely yes. Uh, I think Elon Musk has has uh, endorsed Andrew Yang. Okay, all right? Now, the the, the J. Scott Garibay uh, hot take on this is, no, this is not going to help us, right? And the reason, and I'll, I'll give you my, my reasons why, okay? I, by the way, before I go a step further, I understand that a lot, of, a lot of you out there really like Elon Musk. I get that. I understand why. I don't. I'm going to give, I'm going to give you my, my reasons why I'm not a super fan of Elon Musk. By the way, I'm really not a super fan of Elon Musk now, right? I, I think there's a difference between Elon Musk even 10 years ago and Elon Musk now, okay? So let's get, let's get into it. There are four reasons why, in my opinion, the Elon Musk, uh, <clears throat> the Elon Musk tweet, uh, endorsement tweet does not help us, okay? They all start with F. All right, so the first one is 420, all right? Uh, so 420, uh, so basically Elon Musk has a 420 problem in my opinion in that he has associated himself at, he has associated himself with the 420 community. Okay. Now, uh, I'm thinking some of you may out there may not know what I mean by 420. So I'll give you a clue. Uh, whoa, man, I can see all the colors and I got the munchies now 420. All right. If you don't know recognize it, Google it. All right. So I think he has a huge, like he has a 420 problem. So I think Elon Musk has a 420 problem where not specifically like him. The issue is his association with the 420 community. Right. So here's the issue, right? Elon Musk is an international, you know, he's like a CEO and um, yeah, pretty sure he's still CEO of a, a very at minimum recently he was still he was CEO of Tesla <clears throat> and actually the, the the fact that I even need to wonder if he's still CEO of Tesla that's a problem right but I'm pretty sure he's still CEO of te- Tesla and that's the issue right he has an international corporation which is you know operates out of um, out of the USA there are billions of dollars on the line and he went on Joe Rogan and made it very clear that he has goodwill a lot of goodwill if not it being a direct member of the 420 community, right? And that's a huge problem, okay? And here's why, right? So there. So when it comes to 420, I think there's two tracks, okay? So one, I understand that 420 has had a problem historically with putting people who maybe didn't deserve to be in prison in prison, right? I, I get that. And Andrew Yang is speaking that. He's saying, hey, when I get in, everybody associated with 420 is going to get, you know, let out, right? It's a big part of his platform, right? I get that, right? But here's here's the kicker, right? If you're a real CEO and if you really have billions of dollars, a billion, multi-billion dollar company on the line, it is outrageously irresponsible, in my opinion. Completely legal, but outrageously irresponsible to to 
exhibit goodwill to the 420 community. You're just, you're really getting into a situation where you're telling people, I don't take this job seriously and you shouldn't take me seriously. And I will say as, as, as a, um, as a person, you know, I, I, I value my time, right? And it's important to me that I talk to intelligent people who are trying to do good things and trying to move this world forward. And in my opinion, I don't think people who are part of the 420 community are bad people, but I absolutely have less respect for them than people who are not part of that community, right? So it's just, and the reason why is in my very anecdotal uh, opinion, in my very anecdotal uh, experience, right? Every time I've seen somebody join the 420 community, it it is a divider. It is not a multiplier, right? So the reality is, I've known tons of people, and they're like, "Hey, I'm gone, I'm going deeper into this community, or I'm starting going in this community." You can cut their life in half, right? You could cut what they achieve in half. You could cut the intelligent things they're going to say in half. It, it's it's a divider of human potential, right? So when I see a serious CEO saying, "Hey, everybody, I'm part of the 420 community," I'm like, "Oh, you see, you're just checked out now. You're you're on you're on permanent vacation. This is the part where you you just enjoy your your billions of dollars, and you're really not." driving your company forward anymore. You're just kind of like checked out a little bit, right? So it's a huge problem. It is a huge problem. I think it was a major mistake. Uh, Elon Musk went on uh, on uh, Joe Rogan and I think he just shouted to the skies, nobody should take me seriously anymore, right? And and in my, dest- my best days are behind me. I have a very strong opinion about this. This is purely a Scott Garibay thing. I understand that a lot of people have really serious uh, opinions on this, but I'll tell you right now, I have seen person after person after person after person go into that community and I've never once seen anybody multiplied in what they achieved or um, it slows them down, it breaks down their, their function, it's, it just makes them a lesser person you know, in what they can achieve, not in, the val- not in their value as a human being. Um, but it, it's just, it's never a good thing. It's just, it's never a good thing. And by the way, I'm, I'm a teetotaler, right? I, I absolutely do not ever partake in any rec- recreational intoxication. And the reason why is I got a wife who loves me. I got four kids and I got stuff to accomplish in this world. And I'm telling you right now out there, if you're part of that community, really consider joining me on the sobriety community. It is much better and you could rock this world a lot easier if you're not dealing with recreational intoxication. It doesn't help in any way and it absolutely hurts. And I think it was a huge, huge problem that Elon Musk uh, connected himself and Tesla to that, uh, you know, through through that option, you know. And, and I understand that the connection to Tesla is very indirect, but still, you know, like CEO, you're like, hey, I'm the person who's leading this whole thing and this is what I'm spending my time on. It's, it was a massive, massive problem. Okay. All right. So that's, that doesn't help us. Right. It, 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 you know, I think a lot of people are like, Oh, Hey, he's a billionaire. Is he sporting us? And I'm like, he's just a 420 community person. Who's going to just continue to divide their life down to nothing. Right. Like it's not, this isn't like, you know, he's a lot, you know, at this point, uh, when it comes to CEOs, he's a lot more like Seth Rogen than he is like Jeff Bezos. That's my take. All right. All right. So, okay. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is finish. How do you finish? Right? So that's, that's the issue is, uh, you know, Elon Musk, he's a CEO. He started right. And, um, and now he has to finish. Right. And that, by the way, this is, this is a new thing, right? It's J. Scott Garibay thing. But if you're a CEO and you start up your company and you run your company for 10, 15 years, when you get to that 15 year, right? Your whole job is saying, hey, okay, I'm a Titan, right? Like I, I'm 20 feet tall, right? Yes, everybody loves me and I've shown what you can do. But when you've been running a company for 15, 20 years, you got one job, one job. You have to finish well. How do you finish well as a CEO, right? You anoint, you point to, you make your next CEO and you start saying, this is the person that's going to replace me and everything I built is not going to fall over like a uh, like a house of cards. And I don't see Elon Musk doing that. Who's Elon Musk's protege? Who is the person who will replace him, right? And the, frankly, many, many, many CEOs would like reject to do this because in order to do it, you need to say, I am thinking about the employees I have more than myself, right? And you, and you have to say, I'm going to think about my own mortality, right? Like about the time when I'm going to die, 
right? And frankly, if you're a billionaire, especially today, and you're balling out in America, it's the last thing a lot of CEOs wanna, wanna think about. But I, I think about it, right? And if I see a CEO who isn't, who has been there for 10, 15 years, 20, and is up in, uh, is up in years and is not pointing to the new CEO and saying, hey, I'm not gonna be here forever. This is the person that's gonna make Tesla a 100-year company rather than a 20-year company. I don't like that. I think he's fin he's finishing poorly. So finish is the, is the second one. This next one is really strange. Fracking. Fracking is crushing Tesla, right? Fracking is a really odd... So fracking is technology. I'm a tech guy, right? So fracking is incredibly important in American history, and it is happening right now. So basically, you know, before fracking, which is only 10 or 15 years old, right? In America, it was in, and all over the world, is incredibly difficult to get oil out of the ground. Now we could suck it out like a straw, right? It, it, you use chemicals to break down rock, and you can just like get a lot of oil that re, that previously was never really attainable. Before fracking, people were like, "Oh man, we got five, ten years of oil left." Now with fracking, people are saying, "Yeah, we have four, five hundred years of oil left." Fracking has allowed us to have. $2.35 gas, right? Which means that every single thing that's shipped in America is cheaper. Everything's cheaper, right? So gas is incredibly, so fossil fuel, oil, gasoline is incredibly available. And so the reality is this need for the Tesla has really, in my opinion, is really evaporating, right? So the, the electronic car is really not as cool as it was before and not as necessary as it was before fracking. Right? Fracking is a very real thing, and if people aren't talking about it, they're not being realistic about energy, right? Like, and so, and the other issue is, this is a big one too, this allowed us to be independent, uh, to be fairly independent when it comes to oil in America, right? We had to have a lot of reliance on international sources, and now with fracking, we can get a ton of oil right from our own country. That's a big deal. Excuse me. So that... That's a big one. And 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 uh the other issue is so yeah, so when you talk about fracking, you're talking about fossil fuels. When you talk about fossil fuels, you got to talk about cool cars, right? So Tesla is a cool car to an incredibly narrow band of people. It is a very cool car to hyper hyper environmentalists, right? People who care very very deeply about environmentalism, right? By the way, I care about environmentalism. I think it's a 50-year problem. We're gonna we need we have 50 years to to solve it, and I I'm very very confident that the technology we have will allow us to solve the environmental problem while we live like like while we live like bald out Americans rather than shriveled peasants who eat plants and drive lame cars, right? Like so. I want to save the earth, but I want to have my Ford F-150 and I want to eat my double cheeseburger, right? And so that's the issue, right? And that's the problem with the Tesla is it is not cool, right? This is J. Scott Garibay and I think a lot of other people, right? The Tesla is hyper cool to people who have, who make six figures and are environmentalists. That's not a lot of people, right? Like it really isn't. And the, frankly, I don't think the, the Tesla is really considered cool to almost anybody else, right? And the reality is, you know, what are you, you know, now that fracking's here and we have lots of fossil fuels and it's super cheap, what are you gonna, what are you gonna choose to take, right? Are you going to, yeah, are you actually going to, uh, are you gonna drive, you know, a 500 horsepower uh, Mustang? Are you gonna drive, you know, a three, 400 power supercharged Supra, right? You know, JDM style, or are you going to, you know, uh, are you going to drive a car that runs on AAA batteries? Like it's just, you know, that you're, you, that you need to wonder if you're going to be able to, you know, drive over the next, next, uh, town without sitting and, and charging up your car. It just is not a cool vehicle, right? It, it's, 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 and it's a problem, right? Like, I, I understand that people are like, oh, Scott, you can't think about this stuff, but like, this is America, man. We are used to bald out, crazy cool muscle cars. And like, and, you know, and, and, and the reality is Tesla right now is just not selling a cool car, in my opinion. Right? And, and it, that's just, just my take, all right? So that, it's a problem, right? All right. Uh, because and and the reason why is the people who are endorsing you want them to attach to cool things, right? And I just 
fundamentally, at a, by the way, if you're a Euro, if you're an international, I totally get that, that the Tesla's super cool, right? But in America, we have a, we have a tradition here, man. You know, we got Corvettes and Camaros, and we've even adopted the, when we have adopted as a, you know, as a cool car child, the, the Nissan Skyline, man. We know what cool cars are, and Tesla ain't one of them, right? It's, it's just the thing. All right. What is the last F? There's four Fs that are a problem around Elon Musk's endorsement. And the last one is fringe, right? So so basically, uh, Andrew Yang is trying to beat the fringe label. A lot of people are like, oh, Andrew Yang, 2-3% polling. He's a fringe candidate, right? Well, the reality is here's the problem. Elon Musk is a, he's a fringe CEO. Like, he's a fringe... Elon Musk is a fringe endorsement, right? Because the reality is... I think Elon Musk is making himself more and more fringe, right? So one, uh, he had all like he had a lot of momentum, and he was really attaching a lot of good things to his name. He was attaching space travel to his name. He was attaching, um, you know, the these electric cars to his name, uh, which used to be cool until fracking made them kind of unnecessary, in my opinion, right? Uh, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna circle back on on the the electronic car in just one minute, right? So. You know, and but the, this four twenty twenty thing, it really it's a huge problem. I really feel like that takes Elon Musk and fully, fully puts him into the fringe, the fringe area. Like when it comes to you know big international business, you cannot be attaching your name and the name of your company to four twenty. It really tells everybody, I'm not really fully on board anymore. I'm half on vacation right now, and it's just it, you just can't do it. It's it's just not a good idea, right? All right, one last thing about Tesla. I would be, I would think that his endorsement would, uh, that that one more problem with the with the with the electronic car. Reason why I'm not really a big fan of the electronic car, which means not, I'm not a big fan of Tesla, and which means I'm not a big fan of Elon Musk. Right? Is I really feel that it is my opinion that the Tesla is not really a sustainable car from a production level. Here's why. In order to make these Tesla cars, you, you got to have batteries. You have to have incredibly powerful batteries and you need to get, you need to mine the minerals out of the, out of the ground. You may need to make these incredible powerful batteries and then you need to put them into your Tesla car. Here's the problem. Now that we know that there's these incredible powerful batteries that you can put right into your car that are virtually zero emission, right? It's going to be incredibly hard. It's going to be incredibly hard to make these cars cheaply, and the reason why is these batteries are going to continue to be outrageously expensive. And the reason why is since they can power a car and they're powerful, they're going to be wanting to power everything now. You can power a house with these batteries, right? So who doesn't want to just slap a battery onto their house and run their and run their heating and their electric and all that kind of other stuff, right? So the idea that only electronic cars are going to be the are going to be the only customers for these electronic batteries. These electronic batteries are going to can you just go right up through the roof in value, right? So I really feel like you know the future of Tesla. It's going to be harder and harder and harder for them to make these cars at, at reasonable prices, which means they continue to be less and less competitive against very real cool cars that America likes them and, and uses, right? So overall, it is my opinion that Elon Musk, because of 420. Uh, because of finish, because of fracking, and because of fringe, does not help Andrew Yang. That's my opinion. I'm more than willing to hear yours. Tell me where I'm wrong. Go jump into the comments and let me know. Uh, please consider liking and subscribing, and um, and have a wonderful millennium.